Coming to you live from downtown Detroit, this is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep with your host, Joel Conan. This is a volatile puppy here, isn't it? And Dennis Dick. I've bitten a penny. I will buy the stock for a penny. With everything you need to start your trading day. Good morning, traders and investors. Welcome to this Friday, April 21st edition of Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. I'm Spencer Israel, here with Joel Elkanen and Dennis Dick. Got a great show for you folks again today. We're going to talk about uh, earnings, as is the use during earnings season. We're also going to talk about this rally in steel stocks. Today is options expiration day, and we're going to talk about the ratings in McDonald's. It's had a very interesting week uh, ratings-wise, so that's just a few of the topics we're going to get to today. Our guest running us at 835 will be Anne Marie Band. She is a trader, technician, author, and the CEO of the Trading Book. Com. Joel, how are we doing the S and P's this morning? Uh, we are doing okay, up two and a half dollars. Yesterday's high, fifty-eight and a quarter. We haven't hit that yet. Fifty-six evens. The current high opens up to the twenty-three sixty-three and a quarter. After that, we have crude oil trading down eleven cents on the day, just kind of hanging out, trying to find some support at the fifty-dollar area. Uh, last three lows just above that. We have gold up 90 cents and silver down 8 cents. Dennis, how you doing this morning? Everything got going okay with your computer? Mm, computer problems a little bit here, and I'm tired too because hockey game was on very late last night. Did not start till 10.45 Eastern, the late night game. Didn't end till overtime, almost 2 a.m., so it was a late night. Wait, did, that Dennis, got who, me a little bit Dennis, grumpy this morning. Who won? I What's that? I didn't see who won. Oilers won, so they I'd stayed up. It would have been bad if they would have lost, yeah, because obviously then I'd stay up for nothing. But no, it. they did win, so scored in overtime, and now I have a 3-2 series lead on San Jose. So that's the good news. Bad news is I'm tired today. Second bad news is I've got my computer that I just bought about two months ago, AMD processor. Not liking the AMD processor. It keeps freezing up, and maybe I've just got a lemon. But this computer, you know, just has random freezes, and then you got to reboot the whole thing. Happens not that often, but at least... Once, once a week at least, and it's annoying because it did it to me this morning. I'm just right there, you know, doing my morning prep. It's my information computer. I have three computers. I'm trading on the one in the middle. I have two others for information. And this one here is my side information, and I just see it, you know, freeze up on me. I'm like, come on. And then you got to reboot the whole thing. you got to restart all your programs. And 10 minutes later, AMD just wasted 10 minutes of my life by freezing up my computer. Are you going to short 10,000 AMD? That's what I'm thinking about, the, ven- the revenge trade you know, on the thing. But no, probably not. So I've always stuck with the Intel processors. And you know, here I am. I go out and get an AMD, and I'm, I'm not liking it. But maybe I just got a lemon. You know, maybe, it's, maybe it's the hardware itself. You know, maybe it's not the processor. But um, for whatever reason, computer's freezing up. So computer people out there, help me. Anyways, let's move into the markets here, though, because we do have some major earnings reports here today. We also have options expiration, as Spencer set off the hop. But let's start with the big gun, General Electric, GE reporting earnings. Spencer, how did they do? GE reports Q1 adjusted EPS of $0.21 cents versus $0.17 cent estimate in sales of $27.7 billion versus $26.4 billion. So they beat on the top. They beat on the bottom, GE did. And looking here at GE, just kind of hanging out. Uh, got a nice lift last night on Fast Money as everybody was kind of pumping its tires there. And if you look at the trading from last night, you'll see right around, you know, uh, just at the end of Fast Money show, GE pops up from 30, 30 all the way up to 30, 60. It's been hanging out here, though. So, uh, Joel, talk about the pre market action here after the GE report. Well, first of all, what a nice move here. What a three-day move. You made a double bottom at 29.55 and then three strong days. So I don't know how much meat there's left on the bone here after a buck rally in GE. Pre-market high right at uh, just above the 30.50 level at 30.61. I see another high up here at 30.59. So I'll use that bogey at 30.60. They can clear that. Maybe some clear sailing to... uh, uh, 31 even. I'm sure there's some big paper there, but uh, nice run in here, Dennis. I just don't know. I mean, if it maybe already had the rally. 
Yeah, it ha- and like you said, three-day rally into this earnings report. That's a big move for GE. You're right at this top of this range. You know, if you go out and look at the monthlies, you see multiple highs around $30.50. Back in January, there was some size there, and then it took it out in February, but just snuck its head above it just a little bit. Thirty fifty nine, kind of put a little double top in there, and we haven't been back up there since until yesterday when we got up to thirty fifty four. and now we hang out there again. So it does look like it's tough sliding here around the thirty fifty area, and that's where it's been struggling here in the pre-market as well. But it is option expiration. Some fun things happen. Big order flow often comes in. Get the big players coming in. If for whatever reason we're stuck in above yesterday's high, get above 3060. I think you could see 31 if we do that. But that's, you know, and then that would be my next resistance point. But major resistance between 3050 and 3060, right where it's trading right now. Yeah, GE, they always seem to come in, you know, I mean, this was uh, Jack, remember Jack Walsh, he used to be the master of this, you know, they, you know, they don't blow it away, they don't have big misses, they just kind of grind along, you know, here was a four cent beat, but you can see they're pretty good with their numbers, Uh, very consistent here, good revenues, so good quarter for GE. Jumping over here to last night's earnings reports here. We had a big one. Visa reported earnings, and it is trading up two and a half bucks. And this stock's now trading, I believe, this an all-time high here again. Bring out the monthlies on Visa here. Well, let's get the numbers from Spencer, and then we'll go into the analysis. How, what, what were the Visa numbers? Uh, Visa reported Q1 adjusted EPS of $0.86 cents versus $0.79. Cents. Sales of $4.5 versus $4.31 billion. So uh, a good report there. And uh, they see their fiscal year 17 sales growth on the, at the high end of a 16 to 18% uh, range. Increase. So it's a nice beat on the top here and the bottom, and the stock is trading up in the pre-market here, up the $2. But like I was saying, go out to the monthlies and just look at this trend. From 2011, when we were way down here at $18 a share, this thing, you could just take your Jeff Mackey purple crayon and just <laughs> connect the dots here. This thing has been straight up. I mean, there has been a friendlier trend. Then this Visa trend, and I mean, MasterCard looks identical here, and obviously, you know, I've talked about it on the show before, I was lucky enough to participate fully in the MasterCard, because I still have it in my invest portfolio after buying it back in 2010, and it's been a really good one here. I wish I would have bought the Visa as well, though. Both of these stocks have just been unbelievable performers for the last seven years. Uh, you did get a quick spike up uh, above the $94 level, Dennis. 94.17. We've backed off into the 93 handle. I'll just give you the former all time high. Former all time high, 92.05. Guess the only thing you could say with this is, you know, you're trading up here a couple bucks. I don't know if there's any paper in the book to keep a lower open. Uh, sure. But. Yeah, you take a look in the book there, see if there's some shares to hold it down. Former all-time high is 92.05. Uh, that was made in March. So I think I'd be more apt to let it come back into the $92 area uh, to try and cover short or if I was trying to go long. Have a hard time buying Visa up uh, well over $2. Yeah, and it is thick here, too, in the book. There's nothing su- like uh, huge jumping on at me, but a lot of different levels have some size. And we're talking, you know, when I say the book, I'm looking at the New York book here and just looking at very, various levels here. And this liquidity is the New York, so they don't have a pre-market session on the NYSE primary exchange. So all these orders do not come active till 930 so it's kind of giving you a preview of you know how thick it is on New York. I'm looking at 9190 with 8500 shares and 92 with 18,000 shares and 9250 with 9000 shares. There is some stock there. But again, it's already traded 50,000 shares, traded a ton of stock last night, so it can chew through that, but it's going to be a little bit of chewing. Uh, Dennis, you just want to explain that concept real quick when we talk about stock in the book and holding it down. I know we have before, but it's... I mean, there's multiple books. So, you know, one that I like to look at is the New York book um, because it's a primary exchange. A lot of big institutional traders still like to trade on the primary exchange. Um, You know, if we go back to when I started trading back in 1999, and maybe it's the legacy trader in me, um, 90% of your orders went through the NYSE. Now only, I think it's, you know, under 20% are going through the NYSE. So, you know, it's very fragmented. There's a lot of liquidity happening everywhere else. But not all your exchanges have a pre-market session. NYSE ARCA, their ARCA venue is the NYSE's pre-market venue. But it's a different book. 
Arca has a completely different book you can subscribe to too. So, you know, I like to look into see, you know, what, you know, is on the book for the 930 open. And that's how you get a feel for it. And that's where your imbalanced data for your NYSE stocks comes from too. It comes from that NYSE book, the orders on the book telling you, you know, whether, you know, there's a little more buy orders or sell orders. Same uh, reason, same thing with the closing data that's coming from the New York book. When I'm talking the New York Stock Exchange imbalances, NASDAQ has their own uh, uh, book, obviously, and their own imbalance as well, and so does ARCA. So, you know, there is there is different books, but I've always felt, you know, that the NYSC book um, is probably one that maybe a lot of big money managers watch too, and it's maybe more influential than the other books. Let's get to what we, what we had uh, SLB and HON today. Which would you like to hit first? Let's go to Slumberger, SLB, trading down a little bit here in the pre-market. We know the biggest you know, thing for oil stocks is always the price of oil. But when they do report, they can deviate from the price of oil somewhat. So here we are. We've got a report. Give us the numbers here on SLB. Uh, SLB Q1 adjusted EPS 25 cents is in line with the estimate sales of $6.9 billion versus $6.99 billion estimate there. So a slight miss on the sales. And the stock is just hanging out here in the pre-market, hanging out at a critical level here, though. You because, got it. Yeah, Joel. Well, I won't take away your. Uh, I won't take away your piece here. So That's give okay. us that critical number. I think we're both looking at the same thing. Oh no, I got stick out like a sore thumb here. The yep. lows from the last two sessions, seventy-six, thirteen, and sixteen. Uh, that was also uh, your low at fourteen in March. Huge. So, huge level. Huge. huge. So huge. it. Is uh, as Trump would say, it's a huge level. It's Tommy <laughs> Lackey. Is Tommy Lackey would say, you got to look both ways on this one, right? Because yeah. you're opening into support. Uh, you know, you shorted into whole. Well, it's already up. And it's trading right there. So I think it's got some more work to do on the downside. The fact that we're not popping much off this low. And then you were saying Honeywell, and Honeywell is popping up here. It actually is popping even higher here. But now we're starting to get back beneath. The levels we were looking at before. Uh, Spencer, give us the numbers. Honeywell uh, Q1 EPS a buck seventy-one versus a buck sixty-two is the estimate there. Sales of nine point four nine two billion versus nine point three two billion. So they beat that number pretty nicely, and they hit a new fifty-two week high uh, at, at around eight a.m. Yeah, and the stock was trading up as high as I got one twenty-seven ninety-seven, which would be a new not only fifty-two week high, Spencer. I believe that is a new all-time high there for Honeywell. But unfortunately for the bulls, it is now trading back below that level here again, so it remains resistance. And I'm just looking here at that one twenty-seven and a half. Holy cow! Between February and March, you topped out one, two, three, four, five, six, five, about eight times in like the course wow. of three weeks there. I'm going to the book and look at what's there right now <laughs> because, man, when you see something top out that many times, it makes me think that there's some big institution or somebody sitting up there perched. But I don't see anything jumping out at me. It's early here again, but I don't know. That looks like a huge level, 127 and a half. Uh, can we get Bob on the phone to see if he has his Honeywell GE spread on anymore? Get well with that. He held it for a long time. <laughs> it worked out in the end. Yeah, and uh, Honeywell, unbelievable. This stock has just been the major performer. You got to keep an eye. Eight tops in a row. Dennis, did you see anything in the book there? Or, uh, it's I don't see. Away. I see 127. I see 10,000 shares. There's nothing really jumping out huge to me, though, at 127 and a half. So that's not saying there can't be something there, though. Um, the only thing is, is uh, this traded under 123 just a few days ago, 122.40. Now you're right back at all up at all time high. So if you had any seller's remorse about, you know, getting caught trying to sell the all time high, uh, here's your chance just in one pre market after hours session. Also reporting earnings here from last night, Toy Maker Mattel. MAT and that stock is trading down seven percent in the pre-market at twenty-three forty-five. I believe they were bl blaming Barbie, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got to blame somebody, I guess. So why not blame Barbie? Spencer, give us the numbers on MAT. Well, yeah, it's a thirty-two for the quarter to thirty-two cent loss versus seventeen cent loss estimate. Sales of seven hundred and thirty-five point six million dollars versus an eight hundred and four million dollar estimate. So not good. 
And stock is taking out massive support I had in the 25 area. Holy cow, this thing was just sitting and holding support, holding support. I know it cut it through a few times, down to 24.60. That is all long gone here. We've traded some significant volume below that level. So now I would say that whole area becomes massive resistance. If you subscribe to the old support, it becomes new resistance theory. And stock trading down here, 23.40. You got some levels down here in the 23 handle, Joel? Uh, I, actually, I do not. Maybe a whole number like 23. Three could come into play. Uh, you have a stock now trading at levels that it saw in November of 2015 at 22.63. So I'd keep an eye on that. I mean, great area to cover short. I don't know if they can get it down another buck. Uh, long ways to go to fill that gap from yesterday up. Uh, yesterday's low, 24.87. It's the second big disappointment off earnings here, and you can see back in January, this stock went from 31 bucks all the way down to the 27 handle. So we do have precedence for the stock falling four or five points on an earnings report, only a dollar down, a dollar 74. Not saying it's going lower, not saying that whatsoever. Just saying, you know, you got to be cautious here if you're just coming here saying, oh, how low can it go? Because last time it obviously got hit really hard, and then you know we consolidated for three months and then got hit hard again. So they like their symmetry in their charts, like Carter Worth says on Fast Money there and you know symmetry would put the stock probably lower but anyways uh, let's jump over here to well it's 815 um, it's 815 as we, oh! we, we got to grab our time flies and we're having fun i know wow we, we got to grab our first guest or our only guest of the day Anne marie band she's the author of uh tradingbook.com she's an author trader and technician we'll be right back with Anne marie All right, welcome back, uh, traders and investors. Having a hard time grabbing in Marie at the moment. We're going to keep trying her, though. Dennis, was there another stock you wanted to hit? Yeah, there is some earnings here. So let's just continue on the earnings parade here from this morning. Skechers, SKX, popping in the pre-market. Reported last night. Spencer, details. Yeah, Skechers reported Q1 EPS of $0.60 cents versus $0.54. Cents. Uh, sales 1.073 billion versus 1.06 billion. As far as Q2 goes, they see sales between 950 to 975 million dollars. That's in line with the estimate. The EPS is in line a little lower than the estimate, coming in at the low end of the range. It's popping up here, Joel. Pre-market. Uh, what, what What are your thoughts on this one? Um. I've never owned a pair of Skechers. <laughs> I got, I got one. I got, I've had a couple pairs, and like I said, the one hurt my shoes. These new Skechers I got are pretty good, though. So you know, maybe it was just an anomaly. Remember Manuel, or, or the the Reverend there, Manuel Lem Lemelson, is saying that those shoes, they're, they're st they're, they always hurt your feet. And you know, I was like, yeah, they do. That was my last pair of Skechers, and for some reason, I ended up with another pair of Skechers. And you know what? The second pair isn't as bad, so maybe they've improved the feet hurting thing. But <laughs> besides the point. Let's talk the technicals. <laughs> All right. Uh, you got an initial pop off the headline number uh, 220. What was that high there in the 28 handle? Uh, 20, no, excuse me, 2805. Uh, that's your high. You've backed off to the $27 area. Man, there's just a lot of room in this thing on the, you know, not much resistance. I'd say, yeah. uh, tw I don't know. This is a tough one. Don't What's have 50%. Okay. So uh, the recent okay. move got up to 30 bucks. 
down to 25. So, you know, that's I can do that, that air math. 27 right. and a half? Yeah. Yep. What's the market high? Uh, pre-market high, this thing, I don't know, is, is showing me a print over 28, but I'm not sure that that, that was a good print. Report. Yeah, That's that nice. might have been an odd. It says 28.40 right after wow. the report. But I, yeah. But that I, could be right. It gets thin. That Skechers gets thin right at the report. So, and, uh, and it often is this thin period after hours, and then when it's reporting, it's really thin. So I would be surprised if that's true. Yeah, 27.50, that's a 50% retracement below that right now. A daily high at 27.60 uh, to back that up as well. And then uh, just a couple other ones. E-Trade reported last night to ETFC. That stock is trading up 3% in the pre-market. And Spencer's got the numbers for that one as well. Yeah, these guys, of course, in uh, locked in that price war with the other brokers. But uh, E-Trade reported Q1 EPS, $0.48 cents versus $0.39 cent estimate sales of $553 million versus $532.5 million. So they beat the sales number, they beat the EPS number, and a good report. It's a nice pop. It's trading up a buck in the pre-market, about 1,000 shares. So we're very light <laughs> volume here. You can say definitely still in price discovery phase. It was trading up last night too, though, so on some okay volume in this area. So maybe it isn't in the price. Maybe it's kind of just pricing itself around this 35 and a half. So I don't know. Lots of tops over 35 here. I don't know if I'm getting that excited about this. Yeah, I mean, I see absolutely nothing at the 35 and a half area. Your pre-market highs, 35.79. So if you want to go back to um, March, you had some highs up near 36, 36, even 36.19. So I can really only say a lot of air up there to 36. We'll see if it can get there. Hanging out at 35.63, though. Coming back on the downside here, 34.67. You need to get down there to fill the gap from yesterday. And, uh, you know, just, you know, going on what we talked about earlier in the week with, uh, you know, with Eric. Um, you know, these brokers, they never really flinched when that news came out. And then I saw Eric it's tweeting no, yesterday. Yeah. yeah. What, what, saw, did you say, what did you say Eric was tweeting? tweeting? He thanked Bloomberg. You know, yeah. he, he he thought that their that their opinion letter was pretty much going to squash uh, any chance of that happening. Uh, but uh, I don't think there was I don't think there was ever a chance of you know everybody getting a nine thousand dollar bill. But it's crazy that something like that was tried to push through. And you know, props again to Eric Hunsader for coming on our show, being the first to publicly talk about this. Then you had the Bloomberg letter, you had the Sifma letter, you've had other com couple comment letters since then. I mean, everybody's just talking. It's a ridiculous price, you know increase here of over 2000 percent for you know a lot of subscribers and uh, and it's going to you know put a lot of little companies out of business here so i can't see how the sec allows this to go through so i think it's dead too but you know it's still on the table so it's always scary until they actually but say i, it's I wanted to say but, according to uh, chris Nagy, this wouldn't have affected the brokerages they they have a set they have a separate agreement with the exchanges so he doesn't think any he doesn't think the individual customers of the brokerages would have been hit it would have been more like it would have like been, it would have been Bloomberg, like a, the, the, the data provider. Yes, yes, exactly. He doesn't think it would, this yeah. would have affected the broker, but we'll see. Yeah, and I mean, it was it was subjective too. So you know, and obviously interpretation issue. And like we said, we're not legal. You know, we're we're not in lawyers here on Benzinga Pro. So there's a lot of interpretation issue in that release as well. But it does look like you know that hopefully it's not going to go through. So, okay, jumping over here just to back to the earnings parade here. There was one more stock, proof point I wanted to talk about, PFPT. Everybody's leaning the wrong way yesterday on this one because it got killed ahead of the report here. And now if you look, it's getting it all back. It was a report, wasn't it, earnings, I believe? Uh, yes, yeah. They reported Q1 adjusted EPS of $0.12 cents versus $0.09 cents sales of 113 uh, point three million dollars versus one hundred and ten point six. So a good uh, Q one number as far as Q two. Uh, they see the Q two sales coming in higher than the estimate, and the adjusted EPS coming in uh, a bit higher than the estimate as well. Uh, so some decent Q two guidance numbers as well. What happened yesterday? <laughs> what was the news yesterday that drove this down seven bucks? Because that is a crazy fall yesterday. Now you get the exact whipsaw right back up. Well, you know what the news was yesterday? I mean, they called it a downgrade at the more home. I'm trying to pull up the chart. A first. downgrade dropped to 10 percent, though. They, really? they, uh, here. Let me keep looking around for you. Yeah, they, it gotta be something else that happened. Huh? 
Well, no, that's well, it. Well, they also they, and after the bell, they also raised their uh, their EPS outlook for the fiscal year and their sales outlook for the fiscal year. Oh, wow. well. so, so just a windfall. I, everybody I, who I bought that dip yesterday. Know. Sometimes buy the dip works. Holy cow! Worked big time yesterday. Everybody's <laughs> getting all their money back. Joel, technical thoughts here. All right, I I mean eighty one and a half, eighty one seventy actually is your pre market high. Right there at uh, 8138, that was the high going back on March 21st. I mean, to me, if I had this thing long, I got stuck long, either buying it yesterday. I mean, if it doesn't keep going through that pre-market high, get over 81, uh, what is? What did I say, 8180 or whatever, I, I, I don't know. I'd be rigging the register. I, after a down move like yesterday, yeah. I just can't get excited. 8170, barrels through 8170. You got a high at 82, 82.03, but I don't know, man. Just a lot of overhead supply. So there's any other earnings stock you want to talk about, let us know here um, because there was a few other companies that reported. But uh, I want to just talk a little bit about the steel sector here because Trump had some comments yesterday. Do you have those comments, Spencer, what Trump exactly said here that drove the steel stocks all much higher? Well, the gist of it is that they're launching uh, a, a, uh, an investigation into whether uh, steel imports are uh, bad for national security. So that's good that's for, that's the, for domestic steel stocks. Uh, domestic steel stocks, really. And actually, all steel stocks were up yesterday. But holy cow. Let's look at U.S. steel. Um, and this stock is a wild child. We know that. And it's had a rough month here going from 40 down to 28 bucks. But man, snapback rally there yesterday. It is up here again this morning here. Joel, thoughts on X? Oh, man. Just as I was getting my bullish or bearish article out, this thing uh, puts in a double bottom at 28.12, 28.16, yep. and rockets up. I mean, right here, 30.63. Opening in uh, just below yesterday's high, keep an eye on 31.06. And then after that, just a lot of error. I mean, another high at uh, 31.59, but then it opens up to 34. So keep your eye on uh, Mr. Trump on this one because uh, a lot of error up to the $34 level. AKS, NUE, all of these stocks had pretty good pops there yesterday. So. Nice day if you're owning those steel stocks. Um, just jumping over here. Also, Steel Dynamics, too. Another one, STLD. Huge pop yesterday, going from 33 to over $35. So, big snapback. I mean, you know, a lot of this was maybe a little bit of a short, short-term short short squeeze, too. People who are playing the downtrend here getting hit a little bit on the steel stocks there yesterday. couple of upgrades and downgrades to note here. Uh, jump over to Costco. Costco is getting upgraded this morning at Barclays to overweight. Stock is trading up a buck and a half here in the pre-market. Uh, thoughts? You know, I was in a Costco actually. Coincidentally, I went was in one yesterday, and I was like, man, this is so busy. These stores, whenever you go in these things, especially on a weekend, they're always a mob scene, and this is during the week. It's a Thursday, and it's a mob scene. I'm like, man, these stores are just busy is your costco like that too joel yeah it is it is every time you go in there and uh every time i drop you know three four five hundred bucks but man you, you could get some good food there and actually i'm not gonna i'm not gonna give the, the, the name away of my buddy uh but he works for a major uh meat distributor uh high-end high quality meats to different restaurants and whatnot and he told me that if he ends up short on an order Okay, for a place that he goes to Costco and he's got, it has the best beef around. And then that's what he ends up delivering, <laughs> delivering to the customer. So, I mean, they got high quality stuff, yeah. cheap prices. I mean, you're getting a pop here, 171, 74. It's where it's traded. You got a gap to fill, big gap area. I'll give you the highest level. I th- I'm not sure what knocked it down. Was it same store of comps in March or something that, uh, we went from 177. I thought it, I thought it was oh. earnings, actually. Wasn't it earnings? Uh, we can look. Let's look, because that was a I very... I think it was earnings. From, but that was Mar- March Mar- 2nd, March 3rd? March 2nd, I, that was... They're late to report. No, it, was, er- late it, it was earnings. It was, uh, yeah. yeah, it was March 2nd. They got they got hit uh, on a weak uh, EPS number, uh, and actually an end sales wow. number, for that matter. It's been slowly grinding its way back. I mean, if you can get up there above that 172, um, which was the high, 172.11, which was the high back on the 6th, you got a gap, Joel. 
Yeah, I mean, now if you bought it right on that earnings day, you probably took some heat. But you know, there, there you have. Uh, you know, three, four days afterwards, the street shrugged it off, and uh, you know, back up here. You know, gapping into a gap area. We'll see. Uh, really, to fill that earnings gap, man, you got a long way to go. You need to get up all the way to one seventy six fifty one. What's going on with McDonald's? Because <laughs> every analyst is coming out bullish this thing now. And I know it's been moving here, but you're right, Joel. You were saying on the previous – this is McDonald's, though. Now, what have we had here in the last week? Like, we had upgrades in back-to-back days, and now we get BMO coming out, and they are giving this an outperform rating, initiating an outperform. It's trading up again here in the pre-market. Is McDonald's like the hottest thing right now? Like, this is all-time highs here for Mickey D's. And this stock, uh, you know, every analyst is chasing price on it now. Yeah, I don't I don't know what to say. No analyst coverage since January. Then, you you know, you have all this action. I had it. I mean, I'm sure earnings are coming up soon. It's a conspiracy. Uh, <laughs> it's a conspiracy. One, two, three, four up days in a row. You just uh, touched 134 in the pre-market, 133.99, and not a lot of volume here. So strong trend. I don't know. Maybe I'd wait till it comes back down uh, to the close. All-time closing high from yesterday, 133.27. Yeah. So McDonald's uh, just reports, looking here, I want to give you a quick I, I, wait, imbalance I, I look I want to keep doing McDonald's for a quick second just to uh, a little yeah. bit more information. So McDonald's, I'm looking for the earnings day. Give me one second. McDonald's reports uh, on the 25th. Right, so next week. Uh, and going off what Joel was saying, there has been in the past uh, week, really, uh, one, two, three, four different uh, either upgrades or initiations at an outperform or a buy. So, wow. they, so UBS downgraded the stock on, on January 1st. Uh, this on, on April 17th, 18th, 28th, and 21st, there is uh, either uh, an upgrade or a, an outperform rating. Uh, given every day. Uh, so Wells Fargo, Bernstein, Nomura, and now BMO are four uh, days. Are the four. ones doing that? Wow, we have precedence for this, Joel. Remember the AT and T back in the day, the old triple upgrade trick. That was, I believe, if you and, and we might have to have you do some hunting in the pro here for this, Spencer. But I'm thinking, when do you think that was? Was that long? That was quite a while ago. Was that last year? Remember they upgraded AT and T three days in a row, and that was the high. Um, let me see if I can look at the chart. I don't here. know where. Yeah, the, you know what? I'm trying to look at the chart here too, but there's just so many. You know, it's so trendy there. So I, I think it might have been December, but then I'm not sure. Maybe it was before that, earlier in 2016. But I remember, you know, the goldfish memory is working a little bit here. That this thing got <laughs> upgraded like three or three. Maybe it was like three upgrades in like two days, and we're like, holy cow, everybody's in it. And that was the top, and it tanked after that. And I don't know. So, you know, here we are, four upgrades or, you know, four, you know, positive, you know, uh, commentary from four different analysts in four days in a row here on McDonald's. I'm ringing the register. If I, I got it. I got it, Dennis. I got it. Days, here. it. My my trusty Benzinga Pro here. Help me out. And I will give you. And this was back in uh, in June. Uh, I believe uh, who started the parade. Well, uh, Macquarie got it started actually in April, April 24th, but I'll just okay. give you the dates here. Um, what June 4th, you had an upgrade from neutral operate by JP Morgan on the yeah. 23rd. Barclays went from uh, equal, equal weight to overweight. Yeah. Uh, Wait, on Joel, the 23rd, Joel, are, are, you, are you looking at AT&T? Yes. I'm oh, not, actually, I'm, I'm looking at 15, Dennis. Was it that long ago? Yeah. I don't know. No, no. Yeah, yeah, I think I, it was. I, 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 yeah, I think you're looking at the wrong – I'm looking at 2016, and I don't see any – It's 15. It was 15. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Let me go back. Was it in 2015 this happened? Holy Wait, cow, time flies. I feel like this was last week. It was a year and a half ago that this AT&T triple upgrade trick happened. Here, here. <laughs> if, if, I, I, if I can go to 2016 for you real quick. I, I, I don't see what you're seeing, Dennis, about – three upgrades but i do see but joel um, said he saw in 2015 yeah right. i'm wrong i'm wrong okay. but could you pull, pull up the monthly chart and look okay. at june of 2015 okay right june, okay june of 2015 okay. there was i'm going yeah okay okay that is when you had uh on the 23rd you had two upgrades on the 25th you had an upgrade and then you yeah so there was one two three four upgrades in a row Within a three or four day span, and that's when it spiked up to thirty six forty five. You can yeah. see, it, yeah, and, then, I see it. 
and then it tanked. And then it tanked. So yep. with this, we're following this theory. <laughs> and we're following this theory. This is the fourth upgrade in a row. Is McDonald's going to tank now? <laughs> Let's keep an eye on it. Let, keep I mean, an eye you know, on it. If this happens again, we're going to write a whole strategy on this. You know, when you get analyst upgrade, when you get the fourth one, that's the selling opportunity. So we've only seen it happen once. Let's see what happens with McDonald's here today. McDonald's obviously going to open higher because of positive commentary here. Uh, but let's go look at the book, too. I'm just curious here if there's some levels because we're coming, whenever you're coming at all time highs here for stocks, you often run to size at the points. 8,000 shares, only 134, pretty small. And size is going to be a little less meaningful here today because we are on options expiration. And that means there's going to be big time order flow at the open. I'm already seeing it in the imbalances here. I'm seeing a lot of uh, buy imbalances across the board, and they're large. But again, you know, one institution coming in to sell can offset all these. So just because I see a lot of buy imbalances that are large right now doesn't necessarily mean that all these stocks are going to open up substantially. But just for example, Coke, 342000 to buy. JP Morgan, 342000 to buy. Bank America, 868000 to buy. at t 607 to buy. It's buy imbalances across the board right now. But these things flip around on these option expiration days. So just like that. They just, they're just they not even nearly as high now. They just adjusted a bit, and they're coming in. So um, I would say the imbalances I use them, you know, the pre-market imbalance I use it is good information on the majority of days. But on the option expiration days, it's kind of almost meaningless because there's so many big players out there. Uh, and uh, before we go to our next issue, uh, I just thought, uh, Spencer, can you uh, pull up the monthly here of NVIDIA here? Look at the Stop monthly. Joel. Oh, look at this. Can we all stop and give Joel a hand there for saying that correctly? <laughs> I wrote it down. I wrote it down. <laughs> you right. got a sticky on it? A little yeah. TM tab I... in video? Or, or just not <laughs> in <the> video. <laughs> <laughs> look at this monthly chart here. Look at that $95 area. Three months in a row, you come down $95.70, $95.17, and $95.49. And then I remember when it came down there last week, I'm thinking, okay, you know, this is the time it's plowing through. I'm not going to buy any calls on it. And look at it again. I mean, if you want a long-term level to keep an eye on here, look at that 90, lower 95 in the issue. And then on the upside, two monthly row, uh, highs in a row at 110. So this is getting interesting here. Stock will not roll over and breach 95. Uh, just, a, just a monster down there. What about Fizz, F-I, Zebra, Zebra? Because this stock gets the downgrade of Credit Suisse, and this was a very pesky trend. Joel, this is one that you had written an article about and talking about. Since February, this stock has had just a lot, uh, just a plethora of up moves here and up days. And now we get a little red candle yesterday, and then today Credit Suisse comes out and downgrades, and now we're getting a big red candle here this morning because the stock is trading down actually in the pre-market. Let's bring it up. Down 3% here in the pre-market. And you know what? I was so convinced when this thing went up to 85. I counted the up days in a row. And I think it was like 17 or 18 up days Great. in a row. And it was holding it. It was just hanging to the 85. And I just like, it just wasn't going anywhere. And so I had some puts on. I think I, you know, scratched them. And I'm like, you know what? Why can't I go with the trend? Why can't I buy some 90 calls? You know, something out of the money. And sure enough, it went up there, it went up uh, over there. I don't know if I would have held on. Hit 92.85 yesterday. But you know what? Credit Suisse is the only one on the street covering this issue. I oh, really? All, yeah. That's and they, all I have. And they upgraded it. And they it. downgraded it today. Well, no, they upgraded it in December, uh, yep. outperform, outperform, and then now they're back down. Well, that's the way you're supposed to do it. Buy yeah. low, sell high, yeah. right? So good job, Credit Suisse. They're doing this one right. All right. So, you know, wow. They're the only one covering it here. Is everybody in the whole street going to come out? Looks like they're all hitting the stock here this morning anyways. Only 10,000 hey, shares have traded, but stock down three bucks. That's a big move on a downgrade. It is. It is. And, uh, you know, we should call that analyst over there because he had a $55 price target when he initiated this thing in uh, in June of 2016. So now it's, uh, you know, got almost $40 above, above the price target. But uh, kudos to him on this one. Uh, National Beverage. Wasn't there some statistics out earlier in the week, uh, Spencer? I think you were talking about it, about uh, the um, pop and soda usage uh, going down significantly again? Yeah. Well, first, uh, the analyst name is Laurent Grande, if you if you care. And, yeah, the, what I read earlier in the week was that uh, 
It was the 12th year in a row that uh, soda sales were uh, were down. They were down 1.2% last year. Uh, soda and energy drink sales were down 1.2%. It was the 12th year in a row that that had happened. That was according to uh, one of the beverage trade magazines, however many there are. I don't know if there's even more than one, but uh, yes. The maker of Fago Red Pop. Is that what they make? Uh, they make a lot of stuff. They make a lot of different stuff, but uh, stuff see if with you can... fizz. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's got to go on our like uh, great ticker symbols list there. We still haven't done our great ticker symbol show, and fizz has got to be a good one there. Fizz, okay. along with you know, what's the other ones we always like? Fizz is a good one, and I don't play know, at Dave and Buster's. P L A Y. Talking about the great ticker symbols created. show for like two years. I mean, maybe you got to put weed on there for that one weed stock that Alan Brockstein talked about yesterday. <laughs> W E E D, the ticker symbol on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Which one did you say, Spencer? No, I was, I was saying we've been talking about doing the best ticker symbol show for two You got to do it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, it's Shaq, a- giving us ideas. All right. Uh, just a couple other ratings changes of note here. We got actually Stiefel coming out here, and they are coming out with initiation with buy on all these um, roller coaster places and theme parks here. Six Flags, S I X. F-U-N, which is Cedar Point. There's a good ticker symbol. Fun. And C's, S-E-A-S, which is SeaWorld. They're coming out initiating buy on all of these stocks here this morning. Let's go to SeaWorld. We haven't talked about Shamu in a while. It's S-E-A-S here. Trading up. Well, trade up last night after hours a little bit on the upgrade. Or, uh, initiated a buy. And now it's bid here at 1715. But but on a little bit of a comeback trail here. S-E-A-S. I wouldn't throw any offers out there until 1762. That was your April 6th high. After that, things really open up into the $18 handle. I see a daily high at 1814. Uh, you know, those places are just, I don't know. I, I, I want, Wait, I'm not running out to buy the stock. On the- I, I actually have some news on SeaWorld. This has happened yesterday. The last Orca has been born in captivity at SeaWorld. Because remember, they said that they were going to stop. Um, Breeding orcas in captivity. The last one has been born. Oh. So, that well, hopefully I, this one, yeah, this one they train a little bit better because obviously had that Sea World incident before. So, ah, Sea World. Okay, let's go to fun. F U N. Talk that one. That's Cedar Point here. Which you ever get? You ever go to Cedar Point, Joel? Oh yeah, yeah. We used, I used to go as a kid. I went one time with uh, with Emily. I, I'm just not a big fan of waiting in line and eating greasy food. I mean, it's just. Uh, not my cup. What about the see- roller coasters themselves? Do you get on those big ones there? They had the I Millennium mean- Forest they built in 2000, and then they had that top thrill dragster that goes from I, – I did it. It went from zero – it goes from zero to 120 miles an hour in four seconds. It uses rocket technology to shoot you. So it goes zero to 120 miles an hour, goes straight up, then comes straight down and goes zero to 120 miles an hour again in four, in four seconds. That's fast. Uh, let me see. Last time I was at Cedar Point, I think I rode the Blue Streak. <laughs> That's like their original <laughs> roller coaster, isn't it? <laughs> the old wooden one they built in 1955. <laughs> hey, Joel, I'm going. There's this new roller coaster, the Blue Streak, at Cedar Point. The old rickety. Spencer, are you a roller well, coaster fan? No, I was going to say, I thought Joel was, was going to say the Brown Streak, not the Blue Streak. <laughs> that's what happens after you get off those things uh let me see uh but this stock's been a great performer someone in the chat was all over this stock a while ago i can't think of who it was but uh man oh man new all-time high uh the former all-time high 69.81 no we haven't got there we got a print at 69.60 so all-time high 69.81 see if you get a shot to trade it there that's buzzing with some tickers. Let's go to the chat here. SRPT, Sarepta Therapeutics. Sold my Sarepta, Joel. I'm out of it. Um, I, I sold too early because the stock had a nice six-day run here now. Um, we've got some commentary, I guess, from Baird uh, talking about their drug here as well. Speculative play still here, but this thing's been in a trading range. And, uh, yeah, broke out. I mean, we... we... Going back to your theory, Dennis, of when it, you know a stock catapults from an area. I mean, this thing went from 30 to over 60, and that was actually some news that Benzinga broke on Eta Pluralsin. 
uh, comes back down right to that area. In fact, Dennis, the monthly low before the big move was 2547. You got to look at this one at 2626. That was back in February. I mean, now you got a lot of people scratching their head. They got caught in that big up move. So the move up is not going to be, uh, you know, quite as uh, violent as it was before. But uh, it, definitely a nice move here. Nice trend. Schnitzer Steel, uh, Downward Dog, wants to know about S-C-H-N. Uh, stock had its first green candle in a while there yesterday. And you know what? It'll Ooh. probably be up here again today because a lot of the steel stocks, at least in the pre-market, are trading higher here. So I'd imagine this stock may catch a bit a little bit here too. Needs to get above that 1890 level, though. That would yep. be a high from two days ago. Then it opens up a bit. Yeah, quite a bit, at Dennis. Uh, you could. I'll just give you uh, three of the last five highs, or four of the last five highs, right at that eighteen ninety dollar area. And then for that, find something for me in the nineteen dollar handle that you know to uh, as a potential resistance point. I see an old low at nineteen thirty five here, but uh, quiet days, consolidation, nice low to lean on. A lot of air between nineteen and twenty. Uh, really not trading up a huge amount. At, Buck run from yesterday. Let's see if it can hold. Don't want to see it red on the session now. Plows through 19, a lot open. Azercon wants to know about UAL. Uh, well, they've been out of the news here. They're starting to die down the media from the ejection of uh, the passenger there. And stock has just been quietly trading in the same range between 68 72 and right in the middle of it right now. So he's saying, you know, what about the 70 level? I mean, short term, it made a high there yesterday at 7009. So I guess you could use that as a short term level. But really, I'm looking, things kind of in between 68 and 72. I see more resistance up at 72. Joel, jump in and give you some levels, though. Uh, yeah, yesterday's high, nice 70.09. don't know if there's some size building up there. I think right now the major resistance, though, is up at uh, just under 71. You had two highs there. Uh, you did make a new low for the move uh, from, you know, the whole, uh, you know, uh, getting rid of the passenger. So on the downside, keep an eye on 76, 7, 67.60 area, two lows there from... Tuesday, yeah, from Tuesday and Wednesday. So that's your major support. Johan Smith, CMG, Chipotle Mexican oh. Grill. This has been a monster here for about three weeks. Ackman's up. Hey, Ackman's doing okay in something. Um, anyways, uh, this thing has given a monster. You know what happened? Look at the day there. And I don't know if there was news that day. I can't remember on the 20th. But you kind of had your little reversal day there. Maybe your red dog reversal there, Joel, on March 20th, where it took out and it looked like, okay, it's breaking down. It's through 400 here now. We're on some volume here. Got down to 394. And then, boom, two days or just the next day, gets up over 400 again. And then we start to catch fire. And we have been straight up ever since then. So we're talking like a nice three week run here from 400 to 480. So you're talking about a move that's up 20% here in the last week or two, three weeks. It's a big move now. Like, you know, I always say I don't like to chase stocks. And I think you're jumping in here now. It's definitely, you know, a little bit of chasing. That being said, you know, the trend is your friend here, and the trend is higher. The one the one uh, thing I'll say the one thing I'll say about Chipotle is they came out uh, a few weeks ago, maybe last week now, and said uh, that they're going to be increasing uh, menu prices uh, by about uh, 5% uh, across the board, uh, you know, in April. Then we had a follow-up note from BTIG saying they expect – uh, menu prices to actually increase uh, you know, you know, going forward uh, in the coming in the next few months. They, they expect to see a more menu price increases. So something to watch. You know, we had, I think it was Chris Tyler on, uh, I believe, a week or two ago. And it, it was just starting to take out that 450 level. Mm -hmm. And I remember he was bullish. And he was, I, what he was doing, he was kind of taking the Nick Shaheen approach. And I think he was uh, writing put spreads. At like the 435, 440 area, he was just comfortable with the breakout. Now, here's one where, you know, you can look at this daily chart and we'll go, whoa, from 400 to 480 in a month, man, you just got to short this thing. But, uh, you know, look at the monthly chart of this thing. Yeah, and you it's know still what? significantly it off the highs. Broke out of like a year base. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then you broke out the top. I mean, 
this thing, I mean, I know when I get real bullish, these high flyers, they usually turn around. But, you, <laughs> you, you know, can you tell me this is not going to, you know, kiss 500? Yeah, you know? I, I think it could, too. I think it could kiss 500. So, you know, I, I, I'm, you know, obviously the trend is your friend here. So I would say, you know, you just stick with the trend. And if you're trading it, you know, you can stick on that trend line here. But just be aware that this thing can, you know, reverse in a hurry, too. So, obviously, $400 stocks are always a little bit wild. And this thing is a little bit of a headline stock there, too. But it's been out of the headlines for a long time. When do they report? Do we know when CMG reports next? Uh, I actually, I was look, looking at that for, cause, uh, for a potential article here. It is coming up. Let me take a look for they're on, my they're trusty on the 25th. They're on the 25th, so also next week. Oh, they're coming up here too. So there you go. Could have a pre-earnings run. Maybe get up to 500, or maybe the earnings takes you that high. So interesting to see what CMG says, especially you know, see if the people are coming back here after the whole E. coli crisis. Uh, back the chat's busy here today. Uh, Shutterfly S F L Y here. That stock, uh, I haven't looked at it for a long time, but it's been on the comeback trail here, too. It looks like it got hit uh, last earnings report, going from 52 down to 42. And just quietly here, we've almost filled the gap now, Joel. Oh, yeah, nice. Uh, boy, nice two-day rally in this. Uh, not doing a lot in the pre-market. Uh, this that, that another thing that reinforces that gap is it was a double bottom before it, you know before it broke down. So keeping an eye on the fifty one thirteen level, two highs fifty or two lows right there at fifty one oh eight fifty one thirteen. So there you if you're looking for a classic gap fill, yesterday's high right there. At fifty one eleven, missed it by two pennies. So nice run in Shutterfly. Lisa used to use that a lot. She, you know, go on, yeah, go on vacations and then you know instead of having those lump, you know, those big old photo albums, which we probably have like a hundred of them on, she made books of like yep. each vacation, you know, Alaska, you know, yep. Israel, and it's it's nice, you know, people come over and they just got a whole stack of books to look through. So. I guess uh, I guess Amazon hasn't put them out of business yet. Laura does the same thing. Uh, we, we just got um, uh, every year she does a book, you know, basically summing up the year, and you know, it's all the pictures that we've got on our phones for the year, and she puts it together. And she enjoys doing it, and and uh, you know, it's fairly cheap too. So yeah, I I actually like the the, the books there as well. So. Shutterfly, they're, they're complaining about the PE, and you know, PEs are one thing, one way to evaluate a stock. Sometimes they work on certain stocks. Other stocks, they seem to just not care what the PEs are. So I'm not sure, you know, if PE applies here in short term trading. Maybe in longer term trading, it does, though. So uh, TSEO, downward dog here. And this stock I saw running across the headlines there yesterday, or a couple days ago here, got the beats. It's been coming back here, Tractor Supply Company. You ever been to one of these stores? <laughs> what do you think? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not you know like to go on you know look at the lawn tractors there for your yard and <laughs> I've been I've been in these stores tractor supply anyway T S E O here so trading up here sixty four actually it's not trading at all in the pre market but nice little run for it there yesterday well give us some levels on T S E O uh, it's not too much to look at yesterday's high sixty five twenty eight. Uh, you have a high at 65.29 on the 13th. So, you know, it gets through there. A lot of room to run. Uh, the high when it had, I don't know, a bad earnings report or a downgrade. That high was 67.40. But I see a little little double top there uh, at 65.29. Now, I think you're going to have buyers um, ahead of the low of the move at 63.06. You've actually had a, uh, since you made that low at 3.06, you've had a step up buyer uh, low at 323, 376, and 446. So someone's feeling that they kind of missed, you know, the end of, you know, missed the move here. And uh, let's see. Looks like a little rally going on in Tractor Supply Company. Tesla. We have the recall issue here. Stock is clinging to the 300 level, though. I mean, the honey badger of all stocks where PE multiples are absolutely meaningless. Um, and valuation, any type of valuation seems absolutely meaningless. Uh, has been holding on to the 300. I think as long as it holds above 300, bulls are still in charge, even with the recall on the table. Takes out the 300 level, though. So it's going down below 300. I get concerned. Yeah, I see uh, the major support. You had three lows in the 294 area, so that's your super major support. Give yourself some room to breathe you know, if it starts to go into decline. On the upside, double top right at the all-time high, 1347 and 1373. 
Uh, 853 here, just imbalance look here once again. And like I said, they are very volatile, those imbalanced out, as you've actually seen a lot of them go negative here now. So um, even though, you know, I had said that 830, there was some buy imbalances, they're now sell imbalances here. So that's the way they are on the option expiration days. They're kind of all over the place here. So um, now we're seeing like Nike, 211,000 to sell. I'm seeing Coke now, 105,000 to sell with a buy imbalance before. So they're, you know, they're volatile like that. So that's something to consider here. The option or the imbalance data on these days are just not as meaningful as they are on non-option expiration days. All right. Can I bring up probably the most neglected stock on our show in sure. 2017? What do you think it is? The most neglected stock? Mm, give it to me. Twitter. Neglected? Yeah, we haven't talked about it hardly at all this year. Come on. We used to talk about it every day. It was like, you know, the Twitter. We had like a set time here we talked about Twitter every Not- day. We talked you're, about it a few times. Few times. It's been no. quiet. I mean, what's there to talk about? It sits here between fourteen and fifteen here for the last month and a half. It's waiting for another rumor, or it just keeps leaking lower <laughs> as rumors don't materialize here. So, um, you know, eventually there's going to be another rumor here again. But I don't know if anybody's ever buying Twitter. Evaluation is an issue. Okay, I'm talking just a little bit more of a shorter term trading strategy in this. I did a little research. Three out of the last four quarters, all right, it's had a pre-earnings run. And I don't know whether it's shorts covering or people finally thinking they're having a good report. But it gets off the mat. It has a little pre-earnings run. It go, let, and then it goes up. And then the earnings report comes out and knocks it right back down again. So uh, I'm looking at this. You can look on your own charts. You can see, you know, it's had a couple runs, and then uh, I had earnings. I don't know whether it's shorts covering or people, like I said, trying to get lucky, but you have a very significant level here. And I want everyone to keep an eye on uh, the 1480 area. We had two highs there, April 4th and 5th. And then you had highs in the last two sessions right there at 1475, 1479. So I'm looking for a little pre-earnings run here in Twitter. And then they come out. Maybe the 15. (laughs) More than 15. You can get more than 15. We need, I almost sent right, that coming on here. You okay. always lose on Twitter. You already owe me a steak dinner for Twitter here. Okay. So stop burying yourself in Twitter. Okay. <laughs> what, do you want, what do you want to propose to me? I'll listen to offers. Okay. I'd say by the earnings day on uh, April 26, it's above $15. No, I just said it could go to 15. You were 15, laughing. You were thinking 15, 16. No, not 16. I need odds. <laughs> How about no? I need odds on this. Things got like a ten or fifteen cent range every day. I mean, this is just well, twenty four cents yesterday. Had a little bigger range the day before. When when on the earnings day? Rumor to get it going again. When on the (laughs) earnings day? Did they report Wednesday morning? When when on Wednesday? When would the bet be before the earnings? (laughs) All right. Okay. Uh, Maybe right, they're short gonna, maybe it, Dennis. Actually, maybe short they're gonna it. buy this one on earnings for once. Have they ever bought the stock on earnings? <laughs> it goes down what every t- earnings report, doesn't it? <laughs> it? Well, yeah, because it has the pre-earnings run that I'm trying to alert our listeners. <laughs> so I, I I won't argue with that. I think the thing could see 15 too. So I'm not making you a bet. I think you could see 15 prior to the report. On the report, all bets are off because they, you know, we know that when they say stuff, you know, a lot of times markets seems to as much as the market loves Tesla. I feel like they have that much hate for Twitter. It's like the mirror image. And valuation doesn't matter on either of these stocks, really. You know, like you look at it and, you know, nothing really makes sense on it because Twitter doesn't make much money either. But I don't know. Just looking from, you know, sentiment perspective, market hates Twitter. All right. Keep an eye on 1480 here. Uh, Spinner has a few stocks. You want to uh, cover those and then wrap up the show? Yeah, we can jump into a couple of these. Snap-on tools. I think the CEO was on uh, Kramer yesterday, if I remember correctly. Uh, this had earnings, too, obviously, yesterday. And stock at a huge pop, $165, up to $173.98. I mean, yesterday's high is one parameter there. I think about that. Um, and, you know, the whole 175 area looks big to me as well. All right. Uh, just kind of hanging out at 173.50. Uh, yesterday's high, 73.98 couple other highs in the upper 73 handle so let's call 174 the bogey on that one uh 174.50 was your march first high and uh wow they got the trump bump didn't he uh he was in wisconsin at a snap-on tool factory right 
boy, you should have been buying that when the Trumpster was there. Look at actually it had the run yesterday, but uh he was there earlier in the week, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he was and there. Another... He, he was there on Tuesday. And other stock here, uh SWK, so Stanley Stanley Black and Decker. And that stock did that have earnings? Yes, I think the, it yes, did. S- SNA, SWK, uh, and SHW all had earnings uh, today. So that was the day before, though, but SWK. SWK earnings, uh, they reported a Q1 adjusted EPS of a buck twenty nine versus a buck twenty, and sales of two point eight billion versus two point seven five. They also raised their outlook for the fiscal year. Uh, EPS, uh, yeah, EPS for the fiscal year is increased. Hello. Level. Oh man, pre market high way up at uh one thirty eight ninety nine. I don't think we're gonna see that. With this one, I would try and be more patient over the next few days and see if I could get it to pull back to the one thirty three area. That seemed to be the area of uh four or five highs in a row. So up up in Nowheresville here in Black and Decker. All right. Uh and- yep, you got one more? I was going to say Spinners is talking their home, uh, the reversal in home builders yesterday after the DHI report there. And I didn't actually notice this, but yeah, DHI uh, opened up near the highs there and then they beat the stock down to the lows yesterday. And if you see the other home builders, similar candles, a lot of ugly hang- candles. LEN was an ugly candle yesterday. MHO was an ugly candle yesterday. KB Homes, KBH was an ugly candle yesterday. So yeah, you're right. Uh, the home builders not looking good yesterday. Yeah, opened up. What was the high print in that? Opened up. Ooh, you would have taken a little heat off the open. Open thirty three seventy six. When just missed uh, uh, Wednesday high and came back down. There's one where you use that open when it came back down through the open. You got a pretty good trade off there because uh, really, really got hit. So interesting look there at the home builders. All right, Spencer, eight fifty nine. You want to wrap up the yep, show for today yep. and uh, preview of, next week? A lot of stock discussed today. Hope we got to all your questions because you guys are throwing them in, in the chat uh, as fast as you could. We could answer we answered them as fast as we could. So hope you enjoyed uh, all of our uh, stock talk uh, and all of our shows this week. Looking ahead to next week, we've got Dan Zanger on. Uh, Paula Monica from CNN Money. Michelle Krebs is our go-to auto analyst. Uh, Kirk G. Plessis, he's an options guy. So we're going to be joined by those guests and more uh, next week. Hope you enjoyed our show today and all of our shows for the week. That's it for us. Please remember that all the information, material, and content from our show is for informational purposes only and not meant to be investment advice. If you don't uh, listen to the show live and you want to listen to it on the recording, you can do that on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. Just search for pre-market or Benzing on any of those platforms. And to listen to the show live, if you listen to it, the recording, just go to premarket.benzinga.com. That's it for us. Have a good rest of your trading day and a good weekend. We'll be back with you folks on Monday. Whether you're a short-term swing trader or a long-term investor, you need to check out Thinkorswim, brought to you by TD Ameritrade. There's a reason why Thinkorswim has been named the number one trading platform, because it has it all. With Thinkorswim, you can trade stocks, options, futures, forex, and virtually every other type of order. Get notifications on mobile devices and interact with other traders in chat rooms. You can also use technical indicators and see the latest investing and trading education in Think Money magazine. If you want to keep up with the markets, you need Thinkorswim. To experience everything Thinkorswim has to offer, open a TD Ameritrade account today. Thinkorswim, the online trading platform for traders and investors. TD Ameritrade, member SIPC. All investing involves risks.